Come up here, newlyweds. Come up here, newlyweds. They got married yesterday, y'all. They got married yesterday. They got married yesterday. Come stand in the middle. Wow. Mr. and Mrs. Roberts, y'all. Oh, put your hands together for them. Beautiful. Beautiful wedding. Beautiful wedding. Look at somebody say, beautiful wedding. They had a beautiful wedding. It was outside on the golf course like millionaires that they are. Then they had a derb set out outside where they had people coming up to you on trees. Then they take you inside and all the table was set up, y'all. So they doing it great. Y'all clap your hands for them, y'all. And make sure you congratulate them and don't be a hater. Don't be a what? Be a congratulator and celebrate them. Amen? Congratulations. Very proud of you. Very, very proud of you. God bless them. Hey, bless you. Amen. Y'all could be seated. Y'all are the bomb. Y'all are the bomb. Listen, they drive y'all almost 45 minutes to be the church. Every time they come, they drive almost 45 minutes to be the church. Almost 45 minutes. I don't know if April is here today. April is my daughter, y'all. Oh, she's here. It's not up, April. This young lady, y'all, I knew her from, she was probably seven or five or between five. How old, April? Seven or eight. Her first Christian songs I taught her. Seven or eight, and she's like my daughter. Amen. Y'all clap your hands to April, y'all. <laughs> Honey, bring me these. Bring me these. Listen. There's some, there's some people in this service, y'all, I can't say enough about. We have opened a place for, called Jump In. What is it called? Jump in. It's called Jump In. And what we do at Jump In is it's, we help persons that are homeless, persons who, who, who are in transition, and they have a place that they can go and eat. They have a place that they eat every day that they go in, seven days a week. Even now, that place is open. Right now, while we're sitting here, that place is open, and they watch the services. So they watch us live while the service is going on. People are getting saved. So it's like another church at the jump in right now. They're probably watching me right now. So hello to all y'all at the jump in. And they, they love it, what's happening. And we have people who, even on Sundays, they have to be there to make sure people are being fed. Seven days a week, they use the bathroom. If they need clothes, if they need shoes, if they need toiletries, we have it all set up. Clap your hand for that ministry that we have up there. That's powerful. Listen, I'm gonna say something to all my visitors. Make sure you hear this. This is truth. This isn't, this isn't made up. And you, you go home and put this in your back pocket like children. The greatest investment you could ever make is in person's lives. That's not cliche because you could make an investment in land and property, those things fail. An individual life is what God is interested in. Somebody say amen. People got into Bitcoin because somebody recommended Bitcoins. They get in, in, invested in stocks because people recommend stocks. But people who understand that the greatest investment is people. Say, prove it. Prove it. That's only my right side. Say, prove it. Prove it. For God so loved the world that he... Gave. What? Listen, 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 listen. I'm not making it up. For God so loved the world that he... Gave. When he gave is an investment. What did he give? His only begotten son. Really, I love how you listen. His only begotten son. And to add to that, the Bible says that Solomon, somebody say Solomon, Solomon. who was the richest man that ever lived. He had more than Bill Gates. He had more than, than, than Elon Musk. He had more than all of them. Come, come next to me, honey. Elon Musk. He had more than all of them. Solomon was wealthy. And Solomon was praying one day, and Solomon asked the Lord, ask Solomon. Who asked Solomon? Talk, you could talk to me. The Lord asked Solomon. The Lord asked him. He said, Solomon, what do you want? Do you want riches or do you want wisdom? And he gave him some ch things to choose from. And Solomon didn't ask for riches. Most of us think if we got more money, it'll make us better. How many of you money could bring more problems to you? Yeah, that's the truth. It's not a cliche. Shanna, what Solomon asked for was wisdom. And listen to what he said. He said, God, if you give me wisdom, then I'll know how to judge your people. And then God responds to Solomon was, he said, because you're interested in people, I'm going to give you riches. 
Oh, I, I just taught you a life lesson. So the greatest investment you could ever make is in people. You can spend money, but you can't spend a life. And when, you, when, and when you invest in people, you invest in what God invested in. So don't ever take that investment for granted. Because you don't know who will be a blessing to you. Boy, I wish I had some help in you. You don't know who will be a blessing to you. Come here, Tamala. The person that is over the jump in is this young lady that's coming. And I want you to know she's fully white. <laughs> Five of y'all laugh. What is she fully? White. I'm saying that for a reason because some of us don't want to deal with black people. Some of us don't want to deal with white people. And we get all caught up in, 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 in programs and, and issues. Again, you don't know who's going to be your blessing. Stand in the middle, Tamala. Tamala came to me, was on drugs, living on the streets many years ago. I took Tamala in, ministered to Tamala, brought her up. When I brought her up like my own daughter, again, you notice she is white. What color is she? White. Make no mistake of it. That's all white. Brought her up like my own daughter, loved her in her mess. Tamala went to Stetson, graduate top of her school at class at Stetson University. University was on drugs. I'll let her tell you the rest later. Sit down. Top of her class at Stetson. And not just top of her class, she also have a master's in counseling or doctorate. What do you have, Tamala? Master's in pastoral counseling. She's over that center. Now, when I met her on the streets, y'all, on drugs, I never knew she would be the run running that center. You don't know who can be a blessing in your life. So I'm not, that's not just words. Honey, they don't believe me. That is not just me saying that. That's proof. She's evidence and she's over that. And we have other people. So this morning, I wanted to take some time to give them some blessings. Can we do that, y'all? Can we do that? So we want to call, we want to, this is her team. I don't know if Kenville is here. If Kenville come, come up Kenville. We want to bless Kenville for his, his hard work. Come up, be gone. come on the stage. Come on the stage, his hard work. Come up, be coming up with a bop. Come up here with your bop. This is Kenville Watson. He's one of the workers at that, at that center. This is for you. And then I want you to go stand right on it. Yeah, it's okay to cry. down on the side of Tamala. Somebody could come up here and just hand these to my wife real quick. Maybe Shanda could come. And then we want to give pa Pastor Montgomery Lockhart. We want him to come up here. Come up here. Clap your hands for them, y'all. Come on this stage. Pastor Lockhart is from the Bahamas and he serves, just serves us. Come and just give volunteers this time to be a blessing to us. I met Pastor Lockhart when I was 13, 14. I was at the altar praying at the time by myself. And Pastor Lockhart came and prayed beside me out of the clear blue. He just came and prayed. And from that day to this day, we have been friends. You never know who is going to be a blessing to you. Listen, Annie owns his own island. Oh, some of them don't believe me. Look at, and he owns his own island. 340 acres. How you like that? In this church. You never know. In a t-shirt. You know who owns their own island? What's the man's name? Brenson, Bronson. Earl, he's a Bronson, y'all. Look, he put, take, take the hat off, let them see, don't hide now. And my brother, Joel Hepburn, where's he, Joey? Where's Joey? Come up here, come up here. These are people, y'all, every day, sowing and giving their lives. And it's my brother. It's my real brother. He's a crybaby. I don't even want to cry right now. He's a crybaby. Believe it or not, this was my fighting brother. This was the one that used to go and beat everybody up if they mess with me. And he still won't fight people if they mess with me. But that's, this is my brother, Joel Hepburn. We appreciate you. You, know, you, won't cry now? you can cry now or later. Come on, y'all can clap your hand. Act like it's you. I'm, I got to take this time to do this. And Cedric Quince, where's Cedric, y'all? Where's Cedric? Where's Cedric? I don't know if he's missing an action. You know, you can't find him. Cedric always or somewhere other than where he's supposed to be. 
Y'all pray for him. And then Pastor Cocroft, is he here today? Pastor Cocroft. Come up here, come up here, Pastor. This is the team who makes sure things are going well. Come on down, Pastor Cocroft. Somebody please find Cedric, text him, say, where are you today? We appreciate Pastor Cocroft, y'all. This man has three kidneys in his body that don't work. Supposed to be dead, but is in the land of the living. And he's looking for a wife. He that find a wife. Find it what? How can you find something if you're not looking? So they get mad. So he's looking for a wife. Amen. And these are people, this is Miss Henrietta, where is she? This woman, y'all, I can't say enough about her. Oh, Lord. She missing in action. She's come to church every day except today. Every day except today. And Cindy Lee, where's Cindy Lee? Come on up here, Cindy. You know we ain't forget you. Y'all put your hands together, act like it's you. Cindy Lee, listen, she's a triple threat. She can preach, she can dance, she can rap, she can evangelize. She's a cheerleader for the Orlando Magic. She is, uh, this girl, every place I turn, I find a, every church needs a Cindy Lee. She, I really, she is a dancer for the Orlando Magic. Not the dancers like in them little skirts, y'all. Get your mind from there, amen. She's one of the hype dancers. She gets everybody hype. You go, you go to the game, you're going to see Cindy Lee. This is for Miss Henrietta. Come on, clap your hand for this woman, y'all. Such a blessing. Listen. She's not on salary, but she doesn't miss a beat. It's she does it because she wants to be a blessing. Yeah. Clap your hands with Miss Henrietta. You. You got that, you got that. Oh Lord, there's another, everybody need one of these in their church. Where's Andy Joseph? Everybody need an Andy. Where's Andy Joseph? Everybody break. I don't know what's taking him so long. Andy, y'all, can cook. He can clean. He can fix a truck. He could get under a truck. He can paint. I, if, I don't know if there's something that Andy don't do. If I want crab boil, I call Andy. Andy does every single thing. And I'm talking, he's such a blessing. Andy came to me, used to be a raster. Andy was a raster. How many of you know what a rastafarian is? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. You know, he was a full-fledged Rastafarian. And he came to come to this church one day, and a lady was a lady who was a certified witch. What she was? Certified witch. She was a certified witch. She was at the door. And she said, don't go in that church. For real. She said, they singing. I'm telling you the truth. She said, they singing. And she said, they singing the roof. The roof. The roof is on fire. I wasn't singing that song. I promise you. I was not singing no roof was on no fire. And Andy came to get his sister. And the church was over. And I spot him in the corner. I say, stop him. That's been over 15 years ago. And he serves in this ministry. He's no longer Rasta. He gave his life to Christ. And he's serving God. Clap your hands for Andy or wherever he is. Pray for him. That's how people miss their blessing. Look at somebody and say, you got to be where God wants you to be. Notice what I said. So that you can receive what God wants you to receive. So that means if you're not where, you, where you're supposed to be, then you can't receive what God has for you. And this is obviously y'all. This is somebody that I said that runs it. I can't say enough about her. She is raising y'all. I want her, her son and her daughter to come up here. Her son and her daughter, like they looking, come up here, come up here, look at it. They, they know they can find them talking about them sooner or later. Soon they can hit them, it can hit them. She's raising, amen, besides taking care of them. This is her son and daughter that God has pl placed in her life. And she loves them. Listen, she will fight you for them. She doesn't tell the whole church off for them, y'all. The whole church, she doesn't tell off for them. But she loves them. Stand on the side of her, stand on the one on the right and the left. 
she loves them to no end. They are smart kids, and, and this is and she's invested her life in making sure that they do well. They don't. They the, they the awesome thrill. They don't move without each other. And so we want to call Tamala to the stage and come on, come up here, Tamala. Clap your hands for Tamala being here. Come on, clap your hands for Tamala being here. Why are you crying? Just the love. Why are you crying? The love. The love? You know we love you. Hallelujah. You can make me cry. Don't make me cry. So you had to stop. <laughs> you're, doing a, you're doing an incredible job. Yes. We're so proud of you. Thank you for me. Yeah, you gotta go. Go ahead before you make the whole church cry. Somebody help her down. Clap your hands for Tamala, y'all. Clap your hands for Tamala. Listen, to have a jump in, you could be seated. To have a jump in, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. And Tamala makes sure all the paperwork is in order, everything is flowing right, so that the seal can flow right. And this is just a clap your hand for the team, y'all. Thank you all. Y'all could be seated. Y'all could be seated. Y'all could be seated. Now, we have another gift. We have another gift. We have some more gifts. April, come. April is here. April is like my daughter, y'all. She came to the service. She is not here as often as should be here. I'm putting her on front street. But she is a part of this ministry. And that is for sure. She's, I think, you're going to school to be a doctor, head nurse. What you do? Nurse practitioner. Yeah, she don't play. This girl don't play. She only stopped there. That's probably why she don't come. Because she know I was trying to push her the rest of the way. And she know if I go, Bishop is going to make me go further. And I don't want to tell him to push me no further. <laughs> but she is such a blessing. She came to service. And we have something in this church. It, how many of you know it takes finances to run a ministry? Yeah. Only the front row. It takes funds. And anyone who does and know the building of the road is not for free. You, geez, you can't go to them and tell them Jesus paid it all. This room is not for free. Somebody say amen. amen. So we do a lot. We have houses that we put people in. Houses, we have people who stay in, who are helping transition off the street. And the finances help. So you need to know that. And April came, and we, every year we take a seed up for 2,023, 2,300 seed. And April came to service, and she heard me make the call. And she said, I want to be a blessing. So April, we want to be a blessing to you. Read that, honey. Read that. Read what it said. It says, thank you for supporting the vision. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Clap your hands for April. Come on the stage. Can we give your daddy a hug? Give your daddy a hug. Stay up here, stay up here, stay up here with me. And we got somebody else we wanted to be a blessing to. These are people who help me continue to do. Latanya, y'all, this young lady has come and run with the vision. She does more on the side than we know. And she's growing to love me more and more every day. <laughs> so we want to call Latanya to come up here. Clap your hand. None of them knew this was going to happen. None of them knew this was going to Come up here, clap your hands for. Put your hands together. These are persons that sowed their seed into this ministry. And we also want to call Minister Shadrach Belzer to come up here. They sowed. It's January and they've been sowing to continue to cause this vision to run. Shadrach came with me with a list. He didn't even give me the list and I don't want to see the list. He said, Bishop, he said, we need more sound equipment. I tell him to put a list together for a few sound equipment. Shadrach gone and make every list he could find. <laughs> And I say, Shadrach, I say, how much we need? He say, we need $30,000. How many of you know I never get that list? And I'm still trying to figure that list out. But he has been such a blessing. Clap your hands for Shadrach. We love you and we appreciate you. He made the list. So, I'm, so if, he, if he lying, it's him. It ain't me. He made the list. Wait. Okay, and we just want to thank, oh, this is, this is my niece, Miss Shanda Nika, y'all. Listen, come here, come here, this is my niece. Shanda, listen, she don't even answer my calls. Y'all pray for her. She don't answer my calls. Please keep her in prayer. She be trying to avoid me, like, because I give her so much to do. 
She be trying, I feel this I need done, this I need done, this. So I just gotta call, I just gotta send somebody to find her. And she does her best. Y'all, she's going to school to own her own bank. She's going to school to own her own bank. Y'all, I didn't stutter. Are you heard right? She's going to school to own her own bank. How many of you know we will have our own bank? Y'all watch. We will. Look at somebody say, they will have their own bank. They will. I think we got our, we got, we, and Shanda will be the president slash owner of that bank. Clap your hand and give God praise. Who else be missing? Oh, okay. Y'all, these are persons, so we want to continue. Look at somebody say, support division. Support say, support division. Support division. Uh-uh, y'all telling me. I say, look at somebody. Say, whatever you make happen for others, say, the Lord will make happen for you. If you believe that, clap your hand. If you believe that, y'all could be seated. Thank you. Y'all put that on y'all's shelf. When y'all walk in the house, don't put that in the bedroom. Say, my bishop remembered us. And of course, we got the Isaacs. They have given, Jonathan is on his way, I think, to Toronto and Takeda. Y'all, how many of you know we got to pray for her every day? Because she's getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. And she said, she texted me today. She said, Bishop, she said, I feel like something's about to drop out of me. I said, don't let it drop in service. <laughs> she did. I said, don't let it drop in service. Let it drop home. Amen. And so I told her, she said, can I stay? I said, yes, stay. And I said, I want nothing. God ain't teach me how to deliver no baby in church yet. Y'all pray for me. And we, want, we just don't want it to happen here. So she's at home and she's, I know she's watching. Everybody wave your hands at Takeda. Jonathan may be getting ready to go on the flight. Let them know you love them. Amen. How many of you appreciate them? Clap your hand. Let them know you appreciate them. <laughs> this morning. Also, too, I know, I know that, 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 that we have, amen, people from all over the world watching. Somebody just discovered us in England, and they've been watching us in England and, and saying, I discovered you in England. <laughs> so they're watching us from England. So these services are live. The, do the cameras, y'all. Put it over the audience. If the police is looking for you, you want to duck when it comes. <laughs> Like, play like you drop something on the floor when the cameras come. Because these services are live, and if the police are looking for you, they can be outside to get you after service. But you can't hide, so drop something. When the camera, do it, scan the audience, scan them, scan them, scan them. Scan. Look at some of them, they ain't looking, you can know, you can know close. Some of them ain't trying to look. Somebody turn their head, I see you. So, these are live, these services are live, and we've, we've been blessed to have one of the largest media ministries in the world. Clap your hands, Lado. Don't be fooled by the plaza. We've been blessed. Clap your hands if you believe that. Some of y'all kept body caking. We've been blessed to have that. Matter of fact, we're so big that someone, I said, I happened, I didn't know I did it because Jonathan never told me. People thought, I broke the news, y'all. I found out I broke the news for Jonathan Isaac's return. I didn't know I broke no news because it was Monday and it was Sunday and the game was Monday. So how could I not know the news was not out? And then he didn't tell me. So I broke the news. You're supposed to say, ah, feel sorry for me because I was so upset about that. I broke the news. And then when I broke the news, the media watching and the, somebody from the media took it and ran with it. And it went to over almost a million views in less than 24 hours. Yes. You know, they told me, they say people get paid for viral. I ain't get no money. But it went viral, so that tells you the people are watching more than we'll ever look at look so so more look at somebody say more than we'll ever know. So CNN may be watching, ABC may be watching, CBS, Good Morning America may be watching. Hello to all y'all, amen. Hello to all y'all. Learn about Jesus, he's all right. <laughs> this morning we got great news. Some of the great news. We had lawyer. Now we had lawyer last week. Come, Miss Lawyer. We had lawyer last week. We had lawyer last week. Stacy Mohan got sworn in as a lawyer. So she's now a lawyer. Lawyer, lawyer, lawyer. Tell you great things. And so besides Stacy Mohan becoming a Stacy, I got calls too from people who don't come to church, New York. Say congratulations to Stacy. Someone in Thailand said, I see Stacy up in Thailand. You hear what I say? 
said in Thailand said I see still Tracy I said congratulations so she now she's a lawyer y'all so if you need a good lawyer that's the woman you want to see amen clap your hands for her. thank you Stacy and then last night last night last night last night oh some people hating Somebody can move the pulpit. Last night, Shadrach, we need another chair. I don't know. I, Shadrach, if I'm interviewing, why are you just bringing one chair? My wife got to sit. Last night, we had a newly crowned. Not new, last night. Besides the wedding. Look at somebody say, it's going on and jump. Say, I don't know what's happening in that church, but something happening good in there. And we give God the glory in Jesus' name. All the glory, not even piece of it, all of it. Because everything that is good is because of God. Everything that is perfect is because of God. We take no glory for ourselves. But last night, this young lady went and entered Miss Florida. Am I saying that right? But we can find whatever I am not saying right. And, and she, she said to me, I'm going to win said it like just matter of fact she said i'm gonna win and i already told her before she told me she was gonna win she's gonna win she just believed what i said and she won miss florida last night come up here come up here she won last night come on up here on the stage help her up yes 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 Oh, everybody is standing. What, what's going on? This our own. This our own. This ours. So, listen, I want to tell you all this. If you ever go into any competition, don't invite jump. I'm telling you, they said jump was the most noisiest people in the room. They said when she won, the jump people had to be resuscitated. That the people in jump, this is the commentator saying that the people in jump have to be resuscitated. Not, not, not Jada. They were, so, they were more excited than her. They tried to run on the stage. I said, Lord, they got to learn some coots. Uh, but we want to interview this young lady. Would some of you could be seated. You don't know. Jada used to cut herself. She used to cut herself. What she used to do? Oh, y'all believe it's not made up. She used to cut herself. That the enemy wanted to take her life. But how many of you know if she had cut herself, she wouldn't be Miss Florida today. So, so sit down with us. Sit down with us. Sit down with us. You sit there, my wife. You sit on that side. Sit on the side of her, honey. No, you sit right there. You be you in between us today. Um, we wanna, we're gonna ask. We're gonna interview. I figure we should keep this momentum. Last week we got Stacy. This week we got Jay. So we should just keep the momentum. If good things happening, why not share the good things, right? Why not share all the good things? And that's right, Mother Diana. Thank you. I, I, I cue Mother Diana. Mother Diana is scared me, yours. But we're so so proud of you. We're so proud of you. We're so, she, 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 go ahead, honey, just get it all together. She get, get a good, good time going, you get it, get it all together. She, we, she didn't know we were doing this, y'all, so get it, get it, get, get it all together. She getting the tissue. Is that for, in case you cry? <laughs> Are we ready? Are we ready? Okay. None of them knew we were going to do this. I called Jada this morning, I called Quinn, and in fact, and I said to Quinn, I said, you know, tell Jada to get ready. And then Quinn said, should she wear her gown? I said, well, why not wear the gown? I said, not just wear the gown, wear the crown. <laughs> wear the crown and the crown. <laughs> this should be a lesson to everybody. If the world learns to celebrate what they celebrate, should we not celebrate our own in the church, y'all? That's right, Patrice. 
It shouldn't be no envy. It shouldn't be no jealousy. It shouldn't be no hating. It shouldn't be no none of that undercurrent because when one win, all win. Yeah. Only my front row. When one win, all win. We all celebrate in her victory. Well, hello, Miss Florida. Hello, Miss Florida, babe. First of all, congratulations. God be the glory. We are so proud of you. Is your mic on? Make sure her mic is on sound, people. Y'all don't mess this up. This is live for TV right now, y'all. Live again, live. Amen. It's all this tissue getting and by prototing is live on TV. Amen. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. To God be the glory. How old are you? I am 22 years old. 22 years of age. How long have you been in the ministry? 22 years. Twi <laughs> Born and raised. I'm a jump baby, y'all. <laughs> Where's your mama? My mama is right here on the front row with me, Stand my Stand up, queen. mama. Stand up, mama. Y'all clap your my hands queen. for the mama. Stand in the middle, mama. Let them see you in your green. Stand in the middle. Let them see you in your... Oh, uh, yeah. That's where she get it from. That's where she get it from. So your mother, as your mother, has she been a great support to you? She has been going above and beyond for me. Above and beyond. Above and beyond. So let me add my first question to you. What made you, did you think you would win, first of all? And be honest, you were live on TV. Did you think you would win? I believed um, that I would win. But there comes a time when you kind of think, I can't believe this is happening right now. Like, am I really doing this? Like, is this what's really happening? Even on stage when I was getting crowned, and I'll, when they send me the video, I'll show it to you all. But it, you could see on my face, like, as I was processing, like, wait, I won. Like, <laughs> I, like I knew I was going to do it, but nothing can prepare you for that moment when it actually happens. And it's like, Oh my God, Jesus, we just, we, we did it. Like, we really did it. <laughs> Amen. I love how you said that. You said, Jesus, we did it. Yes. Do you feel like Jesus played an important part in this app? Absolutely. Um, this might sound, well, I don't care how it sounds. Um, before I went into interview, I was kind of standing there. My mom was kind of giving me a moment to myself, me, I don't like a lot of racket and whatnot when I'm going to focus. I like to... You don't like a lot of... Racket. Like, like noise. Talking and... It's a distraction, honestly. Um, so I like to just calm myself down. I try like, to keep the jitters down. And I literally, right before um, my director called me in, I kind of looked at the door and then I closed my eyes. I took a deep breath. I smiled and I probably looked crazy to the other people who were there, but I looked to the side of me and I said, Jesus, let's go do this. And I really did. Like, I do believe he was there. Amen. Like, I think it was God who, it was the Holy Spirit who led me to look to the side and kind of smile because I know he was there with me. Like, he was holding my hand. Like, we were walking in together. Amen. 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 Come on, clap your hand, y'all. You clap your hand. So what does it feel like going to bed and waking up this morning? How did you feel waking up this morning? Oh, my gosh. It didn't click until I was out of the bed. I was going to brush my teeth, and I was like, wait. I'm National Miss Florida, and I ran back. I was like, Mom, Leah, because Leah got to stay the night, you guys. I was like, yo, I'm National Miss Florida. <laughs> and we all kind of woke up after that, but it didn't click until. Very good. Somebody yeah. bring in some water. What does, it, what does National Miss Florida mean? Like, what is the next stage? After this is Nationals. That's um, where you'll be crowned National Miss, like just National Miss, period. And what does that mean, National Miss? Like of the nation. Oh, wow. Yes. So how, how do we get to Miss USA and Miss, and Miss Universe? So these, there are different uh, pageant organizations. Shakira might be able to break it down better <laughs> than I can, but I will try. Um, so UNM, that's, it's different. There's like a UNM, USA National Miss. Then you have NAM, National American Miss. But then you have the Miss USA organizational system, which goes, um, you compete in states, Miss Florida USA, Miss USA, then Miss Universe. Oh, wow. Yes. You're going to win Miss USA, and you're going to win Miss That's Universe. That's right. <laughs> By the grace of God, yes. <laughs> now, honey, you got to get ready over there, because you just look. I told my wife last night, I say Jada won. She said, what? 
She say Jada, she stopped, she froze. I say Jada once, she say what? <laughs> so she just started just going crazy in the house and she was so excited. So honey, do you have anything you wanna say to Jada? Well, I wanna say we, we, we're excited, we're happy for you, but we were just waiting. It was almost like we knew this was gonna happen. So it's almost like a finally, let's you know, let's do this. And I was like, okay, let's move along because we're going to Miss Universe next. You know, it was just a stepping stone. But I, I, I was sit, sitting here um, just looking at her and how beautiful she's grown, y'all. She really was is a, a jump baby. I remember a few years ago when you had, when I think you were still in high school at that time. I remember so clear, and you told her to go back into um, pageantry. I remember that, that season, but I think you were in high school getting ready, 15, 16? Oh my gosh. So I remember that so clear. And you said you need to go back into pageant, pageantry. And you started that, and then you did what, the Miss Sunshine? Yes, I did the same organization. Right. I did the same organization a year ago in 21. I got fourth runner up from Miss Florida, but I won Sunshine State because of the majority's people choice, my people's choice. <laughs> Right. Yes, but I wanted to mention this. It was from the time you spoke it into, because I, I remember it, it to this day. 15, 16, she graduated high school, you know, young age, still trying to figure out yourself. And she struggled a lot with, like, what do I do? What's my identity? Am I good enough? So she was going through a lot of that, like many of us in here, many young of our, our teens in here. But one thing she would do was she would wear this crown, right? I don't know if y'all remember this. Every Sunday she would wear this crown on the, her head. And it was because you always teach us, you know, you walk and you walk into what you believe, you wear it. And she started believing. I saw it seeing the little girl growing and she started believing. She would wear that crown every Sunday coming in, even if she was competing or not, but she believed that she was gonna win. And so here we are today. Here we are today. Here we are, come on, come on. Now, I know I mentioned a little bit. And whenever you, the time is right for you, but I know I mentioned a little bit, I know there's so much more to your story. There's just, we can keep it on the safe parts, amen? <laughs> you feel me? Feel you. Okay, the, 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 tell them what, at what age you started cutting yourself and why were you cutting yourself? Um, I'm unable to remember the exact age, but it was definitely early high school, um, coming from middle school. I didn't just start out like trying to cut. I would actually grow mine, I would use my nails. And so I would deal with a lot with anxiety. So in the midst of my anxiety attacks, I would just like scratch, just keep scratching and scratching like on purpose um, until I would develop, you know, cuts and whatnot um, there and it would be swollen and red. And uh, my aunt Toya, she actually saw it a few times. I was coming into church when one evening and I actually started having an anxiety attack and I literally felt like I could not breathe and I was just like auntie like I can't breathe I can't do this and I would literally just scratch and scratch and scratch um thankfully though the scars are no longer there I believe that is a physical um representation of just a healing from that I've I've come very far from being very in that far, place. Very far. So very far. far. <laughs> very far. What helped you get what helped you get from that place? Like how how did you get past scratching and all the anxiety? Because anxiety, a lot of people in sports are dealing with anxiety. It's a big issue. People are dealing a lot of people deal with mental anxiety. And people think because you're in church that you don't deal with anything. Mm -hmm. That all of a sudden we get saved and all, everything goes away. What would you say to that? I will say you need to get around the right people. The, I believe the reason people think Christians don't deal with anything is because of how we handle it. We have people we can turn to, like we have something bigger than us that we can count on for healing or for a relief. Like we can cast things on him and have this sense of peace when everything is literally looking so crazy. And so they're like, oh, they're perfect. They're, no, we are far from it. We still deal with the same thing. Um, we still deal with self-loathe, depression, anxiety, um, jealousy, envy, whatever it is that you guys may be dealing with. Um, for the world out there. We are dealing with the same things, but we know who we can turn to, and it, it, who you have in your circle plays a huge part in that, a huge part. People, people, when you say that, people, not just who you have in your circle, but people speaking life. Yeah. 
people that know what to say, Absolutely. speaking life. Are the, we, we know that God lives. We know that yeah. God's word is alive. So people in your circle who speak life, because you've got a people in your circle who just speak good things. Right. But there's a difference That's between right. speaking good things and speaking the word. Right. And believing what you're And saying. believing what that person says yeah. about you. Honey, would you like to say anything else to, 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 to Jada? <laughs> in the mic, in the mic, in the mic. I mean... It's a lot to say, but I, I think I really want to use this time for her to really, I know you share, but share about, you know, we have a lot of teens that's sitting here like right now. And adults, not just and, teens. And adults. Adults deal with anxiety. And I love the, 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 the topic of anxiety, mental, because that is like such a bold issue going on right now all over the world, nationwide, worldwide, because we're seeing the rates of suicide like spiked on another level, like 200%. And there has to be a reason behind that, you know, and I think we don't speak about it enough. They, the world is speaking about it, but in the Christendom, in the kingdom of God, how are we speaking about it? So today I think it's so powerful because she's a testament for anyone that says, you know, it, it's not possible. I'm, not, I'm the only one going through it, you know, and how do I overcome it? And so you just, you being you, sharing from your heart and, 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 and how you overcame it from 15. We have a lot of 15 year olds in here. You know, we have a school here. So have a, we deal, we currently deal with this, with our, our, our youth The school right that we now. just started. The school that JMTC Academy, we have teens in here that are dealing with the same thing. Anxiety, um, loss, identity, who am I? Trying to find themselves at 15, 16, that's the prime age, you know, let alone go into adulthood. But you have an opportunity here because this is your platform now. And I think we kind of discussed about it before. I remember one time we went away, we had a good chat with her about what's your purpose? What's the whole reason why you want to be Miss Florida? Why do this purpose? Why this platform? And so I think this is a great opportunity for you to, you know, share with the youth and, of course, everyone else what was the main biggest hurdle for you. Or if you sit here now, you can share back to them the biggest advice, or one of the biggest advice. The biggest advice I can give... Um, like you said, share with people, talk with the people who are around just, you, yeah. the people in your circle. When you were saying, having the right people in your circle, right. being able to go to them, mm -hmm. that accountability is what helped you. Yes, absolutely. Um, just knowing who you can trust because of what they speak into you. And not only what they say is, but Bishop always says this, love is not what you say, it is, it's what you do. It, it's that person who answers that phone call at 2 a.m. It's that person who comes and they clean your room when you don't feel like moving. They wipe your face, they wipe the snot off your face, they hold you, they clean up your throw up. Those are the, those are the people you need around you, the people who will be like, okay, are you done now? All right. Let's keep it pushing. What do you need? I'm here for you, and we can do this. You got this. I love you. Not people who just throw a scripture. They just throw a compliment here and there, and they say, oh, girl, you'll be okay. No. People who can see past. Absolutely. And really understand. You know what I love, what I really want to say that I love? I love that. This is such a rebuke to the devil. Yes. Because yes. we're seeing yes. why. Yes. So yes. for any one of us yes. that are fighting in the room, when we begin to fight, what Satan is trying to stop. So what is it that he might have had a glimpse in your future that he didn't want you to make it? Even before this pageant, tell him what happened with the car. Oh my gosh, you guys on Friday, <laughs> I left work to go get my nails done, okay? I was already kind of irritated because I was in there for three and a half hours. Ladies, you know. <laughs> three and a half hours? <laughs> so I come out and I see a note on my windshield and I'm like, Lord Jesus, I've seen these videos on TikTok. I've seen videos on Instagram. And this can only mean one thing. I don't even look at the note. I start walking around my car and I'm like, I get to the front of it. <sighs> my driver's side bumper is hanging. You guys, this is my new car. I bought my car. She this just is my new this car. car. I'm a first time car buyer. This is my car <laughs> that I got, what, November? And so I'm looking at it. Some of the metal is lifted. The driver front bumper is hanging off. And then the front vent in the front is popped out. And I'm like, oh my God, what in the world? <laughs> so I call my mom. She rushes over. I call my dad. And they're like, well, were you in the car? 
like, well, no. And they're like, okay, it could have been worse. Let's just call the police. Let's call the lady. She did leave her name and number, which is most, which is more than what most people do. So I'm grateful for that. Um, she was more than willing to help me out and whatnot. But you so guys. So this happened just before, a couple of days before. Friday. It tried, I mean Thursday. And so yes. it really tried to distract you. It really did. It was trying to get your mind in the wrong place. Yes. But you had people around you again, who told you not to let it distract you. And not just that, but even recently, you got attacked in your eyes. Yes. Tell yes, them I about would. that. What happened with your eyes, your sight? So on um, my mother's side, um, medically with our eyes, it's just, it's a generational curse, is what I believe, because we are strong seers, we're strong in discernment. Um, so he attacks our sight. So with my grandmother, Delarie, she was a, um, a mother of this church. Um, she had to have, Bishop, I don't know if you remember, but she had to have back-to-back -back surgeries. I remember, I do. In her eyes, she would have to get medicated shots in her eyes, like, weekly. Like, she had a specialist doctor. She had multiple doctors. Um, so, a couple of months ago, I was at work, and my prescription has gotten stronger. I saw my eye doctor, and he said, okay, so we're seeing a decrease in so-and-so. Your cataract's kind of picked up, but it's not anything to worry about right now. But for right now, we do see you're developing coronitis and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So, he ups my prescription a lot. Um, and so, I ordered the contacts and whatnot. So... They weren't ready just yet. It takes, for my particular prescription, because I do have cataracts, it takes about a month for them to be ready. So it was a week later, and I was at work, um, and I get this crazy headache. And I'm like, I just came back from lunch. I ate something, so I'm not sure what this is. We're not too busy right now. I'm not stressed. And then my eyes, like everything goes white. And I'm like blinking. I'm looking around. I'm rubbing my eyes, and I'm sitting there. And my colleagues are like, Jada, are you okay? Like, what's, what's going on? And they know I deal with certain things with my eyes. Um, and I actually had to use special eye drops at that point in time um, just to clear it up and whatnot. So they're like, Jada, you know what's going on? Do you need to go to the back? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'll be right back. Um, and I'm not the type to panic. I feel like if I could take care of it myself, I will. I don't need a doctor. <laughs> um, I'm not one to rush or just panic. So I called my mom. And I was trying to be calm, but she could hear it in my voice. And she's, for my mom, if Jada's panicking, and she starts panicking because Jada doesn't panic. So um, I'm like, Mom, like everything is white. Everything is completely blurry. I'm blinking. I can't see anything. I feel like I have a coat over my eyes. And I have a crazy headache. And so with me, when I get headaches, it's generally from um, my eyesight, just problems with straining and whatnot. So those headaches get really, really bad. I get headaches, then they turn to migraines, then I start shaking, I start getting nauseous, eventually I throw up. Um, sorry. You're good. Um, <laughs> TMI, but... But, you were, but, I would, but the, the basic is, is that yes. you were being attacked in your eyes. I was eyes. being attacked. And when you, so it wasn't just the eyes that the enemy was attacking, it took an accident. Yeah. All of that could have stopped you from saying, I'm Absolutely. not going to move forward. Absolutely. All of that could have been things that the enemy threw at you to say, I can't accomplish this, mm -hmm. but you kept moving through it. Mm -hmm. And that teaches you that the just, we live by faith. Mm -hmm. We walk by faith. So it was your faith in God that was walking you through Absolutely. this and the support of your mother yes. that knew what to say to you. Yes. So that's a part of having the right people around you. What did it feel like having your jump family at that, at that event last night and being able <laughs> to support you? What did that feel like? That felt great. It always feels great. You guys like make my world light up whenever I see y'all. I love you guys so much. Just always supporting me and encouraging me and not just in prayer and words, though I appreciate it, but y'all physically work behind me and that's needed. So it really does take a village, especially for this sure pageant does. stuff. So I it, thank it all sure of you so does. much. I Say love that again. It takes a what? It takes a village. It <laughs> that, is, that is a true saying. Our parents used to say that, and we're seeing it as, as adults, that it takes a village to, to raise a child. And that's what's, what's behind you. Here in the Tisha almost lost it last night. I was on the telephone with Tisha when you went, she said, man, you play what? She just started to go crazy. And it, it made, I, she, was, she was just, had so much joy. And everybody, Naya and the kids started crying. I mean, bawling because of what you accomplished. Naya said to me, she came and she laid on the side of me. And she said, Daddy, I want to enter a pageant. <laughs> I said, what? 
I say, say that again. She said, I want to enter a pageant. <laughs> but it was good to hear her say that because you're becoming a role model to her. Yeah. You're an example to her. And, she, and I know she's thinking, if Jada could win, mm -hmm. I could win. And that's what we do. That's what this community does. And that's why a church community is so important. Because we have the community of the world that will tell you, you can't because of skin color. They are real things that you can because you did this before. You don't have a father or things are, well, for whatever reason. But we have a, a church world, that community, that said we can do all things through Christ. Right. Yes, we do. Oh, come on. Somebody, I wish somebody beside would clap their hands that no matter how much we fall, we can get up. And it's not, and this is key. Somebody I was talking to somebody. Honey, you could go with me anytime. I was talking to somebody and they were saying sometimes mentally they are not strong. But the key that I want, that I think that we, everybody needs to remember, is that our mental strength isn't found in who we are. Mm -hmm. It's found in who Christ is. So anytime we think we should say, I can do it because of what Christ did. Mm -hmm. So he's our strength. Yeah. Like how my daughter looked at you, and she said, well, if Jada could win. So we could say, if God mm -hmm. says I can do it, I can do it. If God says I'm strong, I could be strong. So the Bible says, after we've done all to stand, let us still stand inside of God. So what makes the difference with us being Christians is knowing that we get weak, but in him we strong. Yes, yes. We get tired, yes. but it's in him that we get endurance. We know we fail, but in him we can get up. We know we lose, but in him we gain. That is, I love how you said, that is why we, 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 we know that it's bigger and we can look to someone greater because who we are is found in him. And if we learn to understand that we're not just coming in these doors and, 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 and sitting down hearing good service or hearing a word, but what is being taught is that all we need and who we are is found in Christ. Yeah. Not found in the world, not found in money, not found in, in, in how we look, yeah. but found in God. Because you're beautiful, but the enemy was lying to you. Yes, you so how many people have gifts, mm -hmm. but the enemy is telling them you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you don't fit in. You, you're not a part of the, the, the group. But when God has called them to be a leader, God has called them to greatness, like God has called you. Do you believe in your heart that you can go on one day and become Miss USA or Miss Universe? Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, why is key? Five people clapping. Why that is key is because there was a time you were cutting yourself. Absolutely. But look at how God has caused your confidence. Not because you were not incompetent, that you didn't have times that you were not confident, but because you stayed in God. Right. Pastor Elliot did a, a, a sermon on, on Friday, and Pastor Elliot said, staying in position. You stayed in position through the good days and the bad days. And because you, that's right, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and today you can sit here and you're going to represent, not just in this church, but now you become an ambassador for people who are not in church. For young women all over the world, you'll become an ambassador for. Because, and this, this platform, it happened last night, but now you're in a global ministry. So people in England are going to learn about Jada. People in Thailand is going to learn about Jada. People in China is going to learn about Jada because that's all our television audience. So it's so much bigger than we could ever imagine, which is just like God because he said, I will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think. And you see God performing that in your life. What is it like being 21? And being in God now, what is it like? Like coming into this revelation and understanding God at 21. There is nothing that can compare to this, and I'm saying this at my big young age. Yeah. <laughs> for for young ladies, young men, older women, older men, there is nothing that compares to this. Like I've been in this all my life, but I did need that clarity for myself. Um, I I believe that develops when you really do push for a relationship with God when you seek him is what Bishop teaches us to do. Seek God and right. in seeking him, he reveals himself in Very good. so many ways. Very good. He Thanks, Lord, don't lose your thought. You, you're doing great. <laughs> seeking him. You come to 530 prayer sometimes. Yes. Yes. You get up out of your bed at 21 mm -hmm. and come to 530 prayer yes. and kneel at this altar. Yes. Like walk in here with your sheet yes. or your, your blanket. All three of them. Or, <laughs> 
and you lay on the floor by yourself. And I snot. And, and you snot. You cry, and you snot. Right after work. And right after right work. Right after work. You just come and you talk to God. Absolutely. With my notebook and everything. Hold, I can't put the with mic. my notebook and everything, and yes. You, you lay on this floor with no service, no no piano, no mm -hmm. keyboard, no light. You walk in here by yourself and yes. talk to God. Developing that relationship yes. with God, so which good. is now forming who you are, mm -hmm. so which is forming you to be strong, to fight, to walk on that stage with confidence, to not be intimidated. Absolutely. Come on, y'all, clap your hand if you want. You could shout, you could dance, you could spin. <laughs> you know, a lot... You know, a lot of times when you think of pageantry, you think that it's fixed. I don't know if anybody besides me, you think, I think they, they got this fixed, they got who they want to win. But how many of you know God is a, he's a great fixer? <laughs> and he knows how to intervene. He knows how, how to just come in. Now you have, a, you have an opportunity for me, for me to say this is, is, is just, to, just to represent who Christ is. Black, white, Chinese, it doesn't matter. You have an opportunity. And sometimes people will not hear you. They will hear you because of a crown. That's right. That's right. That's why you have it. Yeah. They will hear you because of a crown. I could go preach and be like, who are you? That's why you But if you bust in with a crown, be like, oh, what does she have to yeah. say? Yeah. So true. God has just opened up to you a whole yeah. nother platform of people that will listen and people that will hear. So my advice to you would be, anybody that wants to come to you, you can get ready to ask questions. My advice to you would be to continue to glorify him. Because as you glorify him, he will elevate and elevate and elevate. The elevation doesn't come because of you. It becomes because of him. So he's the one that creates the audience. So if you get that, you can only go higher. Are you prepared to go higher? Yes, sir. Ah, what's God? <laughs> so anybody in the audience, if you have any questions you want to ask, Shada, anything that, do you have, I want to ask you, do you have a man in your life? My papa. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, I'm a papa. <laughs> Are you dating anybody? Are you seeing anybody? Uh, what no. Is, if somebody wanted to date you, what they got to come with? Money. Oh, no. You need <laughs> to come with the Holy Spirit, the fear of God, and a respect for my elders. Absolutely. I can get my own stuff. <laughs> you better come with some Jesus. Amen. With some Jesus. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Listen, y'all, that's not, that's not made up. I remember one time we went out somewhere and this, somebody had given you a number, yep, I think. Yep, somebody yep. had given you a number on the side. And you said, um, you, I think you went in and said, before you give me a number, you got to go check with my papa. Did you? Absolutely. Yes, yes, she told him, before you give me your number, you got to go to my bishop. How many of you know they never sure came? Did. Amen. Sure did. <laughs> never came. Nope. And show motives. <laughs> yeah. And that's their loss. I always say to people, if they can't respect me as authority, they won't respect you. That's, right. that's the truth. So they think they would try to play it off as control, but it all comes with respect and authority right. and order. It comes with trying to do things right. And when you do things right, God will bless you doing things right. He will bless you for doing things in order. Amen. What did the other girls say to you last night when you won? How did you feel like, what did the, oh girl, the ladies gosh. around you say? Those are my babies. First of all, I am so blessed to have been able to compete with the group of women I competed with this hands down. And I love my previous sister queens, but this hands down has been like the best. Like competition has been the best, just hanging out. There was no side eye with anyone. Everyone was just so encouraging, so full of love and just so interactive. Um, and even the previous Florida, um, Florida Junior Princess, or Florida Junior Teen, I'm sorry, it's so many titles, you guys. Um, the Florida Junior Teen, she is um, a Christian. And I will say, start by saying, UNM is very much faith-based. It surrounds Jesus. The five points on my crown represents the fruits of the Spirit. Awesome, awesome. Yes, and that's coming from our national director, Ms. Jackie. Um, she is very much... God and, yes, godly. She, that is a godly woman, and she makes sure she um, has that in every, every um, competition and whatnot. So the junior teen, she held something called Church Crown or Crown Church. This is Crown Church. And she, held, she holds these every Monday and Tuesday. And this is like a 14-year-old, you guys. This is a 14-year-old who has developed... A relationship with God Amen. like I mean she had me looking at myself like whoa yeah. 
And so we held um, this church circle. All of us were in, my, in our jammies. We had little blankets and whatnot. And so she actually wanted to speak on fear. And she said, you know, you ladies, if any of you have anything you want us to pray and cover for this weekend. And so we went around and a lot of young ladies were just sharing honestly how much in their mind they were and sharing how much they just really didn't believe in themselves. And so we spoke on the spirit of doubt and how the devil tries to plant seeds. And so, Bishop, I had to. I had to speak up, you guys. And I said, you know... And something my bishop always says is when the devil speaks, you speak back. Ah, say that again. Say that again. When say the that devil again. speaks, you speak back. All right, very good. And basically just telling them, you know, one word or perfect love cast out all fear. Very good. And anything God has said, it cannot return back to him void. So he can't lie. So him saying that you're beautiful is not a lie. The devil will always try to tell us the opposite of yeah. who we are. And it's our job. You started preaching. <laughs> Come on. Very good. And I was just telling them it's our job to speak the opposite right back. Not Very sit there good. and argue. Not sit there and let it marinate. Like, well, maybe, maybe he is right. And like not being sure of what you're saying. You have to say it with power and authority. And so, and you know, some of the moms started crying and I was like, whoa, <laughs> okay, I didn't think I was talking that deep. But, no, you um... <laughs> are talking that deep because I, I, because I was just hearing that with somebody this week, when the enemy speaks, speaks back. I see we have Miss Shakira in the house. Yes! Um, it's so interesting. Shakira was into pageantry and God brought Shakira here. Just yes, Has yes, she did. been, stand up Shakira, let them see time. you. Shakira. <laughs> Listen, for those of you that don't know this, she could not be in, if I say this wrong, go on if she was married. She could only do it if she's single. It was the case. They change it now. What? So you can still enter. So be on the lookout. Oh, wow. So be on your clap. Yeah, give God a praise. She's plotting, y'all. She's plotting. I didn't know that. <laughs> um, and so she came to this church, and she's been instrumental in tutoring Jada. And making sure that Jada Absolutely. gets to the place where she is. Absolutely. Give her her shout out. Shakira, I love you. <laughs> this is my boo. This is my big sister. This is my mentor. This is my inspiration. She is really a woman I can look up to. And y'all, she has been really building her life in faith. Like... She's like hard down ministering to me now. I'm like, oh, Jesus. She made me cry in one of our interview practices. Wow. <laughs> and she's just, she's glowing so phenomenally. I wouldn't have rathered anybody else wow. by my side. You're stuck with me. Amen. You too, Maurice, because he helped me with my wardrobe, you guys. Amen. Clap your hand. <laughs> who, who that was? Maurice, he, he tag along. You know, he's Maurice a, is a blessing. fashion icon. He's a blessing. Come on, y'all. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. If anybody's sitting... Sitting and want to ask Jada a question, come and get the mic. So, Quinn, you can hold the mic for somebody. Somebody come and you want to ask her, you want to say something to her. Somebody give her a mic, give her a mic. If you got, if you got it, come and ask her. Quinn, I want to ask you a question. As the mother yes, who sees behind the scene, who sees behind the scene knowing Jada and seeing Jada accomplish it, how, does, how do you feel as a mother? It's, it's been amazing. It's been amazing just seeing faith in action. So it's one thing for someone to say something, but, you know, it's like somebody handing you a paper and you just see what it says, but to see it come to life. That's the best way I can describe it. Just to see um, You're doing good. Dr. Hepburn and Pastor Fong just... They've been there every step of the way. There were conversations I never knew about. I didn't know about Jada Cutting until a few years later, when Bishop and um, Jada were talking about it in front of everyone in service to minister to the congregation. So, but I could trust them. I could trust them. I could trust um, Mother Diana, Pastor Elliot, um, Plummer, you know. There were so many different people that were instrumental and just spoke so much life into her, even without me being there. I went through my own things. So having the church as the foundation and the strength and just the love that just poured the local out. church was you talking about church. the local church is so important jump ministries global when she church. won you told me on the phone you said something you said i just want to go to the, uh, the yes. altar Expl yes. express that talk, talk so about. i went to the altar um before the pageant 
I did a fast because Bishop, Bishop teaches us to fast. What do you mean you went to the altar? Because people in the room okay. may not hear us saying that but don't know what that okay, means. Okay, so we come to 530 prayer. Um, that's one of the options. and Well, not options, but we come to 530 prayer because it's a sacrifice, right? Everybody wants to sleep. And then we also can come to the um, altar throughout the day and we pray and we lay before the Lord and we lay our burdens and we just talk to him. And sometimes I just thank him. Sometimes I just come to thank God and I just find him. He gets so close to me and I just feel so fulfilled. Like, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. So that's why I see God's face. And when I'm stressed and overwhelmed in my day, I just come and give my burdens to him and all my stress. Because a lot of times we just, I used to deal with anger. So I would yell or get attitudes with people or they would take me the wrong way. But when I started seeking God's face like that, he showed me me. So by Very going good. to the altar, I was able to see myself and not worry about other people. You can't change others. You only can change yourself. Very good. So... With that, Jada started watching me, and she came, and even without me, she would come, um, and like Rosie and Takeda, different of the uh, young ladies in ministry, they would take the time and sit with Jada, like Jada shut down one Yes, time. yes, yes, but tell me mm -hmm. what you said last night when you said, I just want to come to the So I wanted to come to the altar to give God glory because I just know that without him, it wouldn't have happened, and I just, I was just so overjoyed, and I was just so thankful just for God's glory and just for everything to just manifest. I think that is so important. The reason why I wanted you to say that is, is because the first thing you thought about was I wanted to come pray. Mm -hmm. wanted and I wanted to, to give pray. God thanks. Mm -hmm. yes. you, could, you could have automatically said, man, look what I have done. But you understood that it's all God and because of God. I know it's all God. And I know also the people who prayed behind the scene and ho who were so instrumental in that God allowed everyone to be a part. What would you, you say know? to parents that are in the room and watching? Stop, come on in the middle, come on in the middle. <laughs> parents who are watching, mothers who are doing it alone, or fathers that are doing it alone. So, what would you say to them, like if they have a, a youth that is giving mm -hmm. them a hard time, what would you say to them? I would say don't give up because just allow time because God has the final say so and it's a storm, but after the storm, what comes? A rainbow, right? So as long as you're, you're watering that plant, uh, Minister Shad told me a long time ago when I used to struggle with Kedrick, he said, Quinn, just keep watering that pot. Just keep watering that pot and it'll grow. And so water, I, how do you water the pot though? How do you water? What do by, you mean watering the pot? By seeking God's face and praying and cover things and interceding for your children, eating, interceding for your family. Being that example also. Like I think being a lot of example, being that very example good. Very and good. carrying yourself and just them letting letting them see God through you. Very good. That's the best example you can be. Because you said when she saw you come into prayer. Oh yes. And her, pressing, it motivated it, her. To it step. took her That's up another example. level. That's it took her example. up another level. Very good. Yes, sir. Come on, y'all, clap your hand and give God praise. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Come, come, come. Anybody else? Come in the front, Stacey, so they can see you. Okay. Um, Jada, congratulations, man. I'm so proud of you. Thank like, you. I'm so proud of you. I said, Stacey, please don't cry, because I really want to get what I want to say out. Um, first of all, I mixed up the dates. I really wanted to go. And when people say, Stacey, we feel like a lawyer, I feel like I won Miss Florida. <laughs> I really do. Like, I'm so proud of you. And um, I remember a time when... You know, we all go through our stuff, but I remember a time we was in prayer, in women's prayer, and you came and you shared about forgiving your dad. And it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. And I had a dream one time about Jada preaching, so it was, it was like I was watching it come to pass. And I remember thinking, this young lady has so much wisdom. So I'm so, and then I watched you even in other times just really blossom into a woman of God. So to see you with this platform, I feel like you've been Miss Florida for a long time. You just got the crown now, but you've had the crown, like even when you were walking in here believing. But my question is, there were times as be in becoming a lawyer that I felt the complete opposite. I felt like an imposter, like I didn't deserve it. I, I shouldn't be that. What would you tell people in their lowest times when they feel like they're failing or they feel like the, what their dream is, they are the complete opposite of their dream? What would That's you good. tell them? What would you tell that person? 
I would say be honest with God. Um, those are certain things you should not just keep to yourself. Um, I wouldn't, personally, I would not just depend on the strength of my own self-encouragement. Those are things I would be like, God, I don't know if I can do this. That's right there. Like, I'm feeling like this right now. I like that. I, I need for you to say something to me. I need for you to do something to show me, you know, we still rocking with this. Like, I need to know I'm doing what I need to be doing. And I need to know that I'm going to succeed in what you told me I would be successful in. And too, Stacey, I want to say that's good that you said that too. The devil is such a liar. Yes, he is. He's a liar. And so those lies are going to come that you are an imposter, that you are, that you don't have what it takes to make it. That's why it's so important to sit on the truth. Mm -hmm. The word, the preach word breaks the lies. Prayer breaks the lies yes. when you go to God. So the Satan can do his job. Everyone in this room needs to yes. know that. Satan doesn't stop lying. He'll lie to you until Jesus come. Yes. There will always be something he can think you're not good enough. You don't meet up to the standard. Those are lies. He, the Bible says he is the father of lies. So the father means he is the inventor of lies. So he's never going to stop lying to you. Even when you get in the courtroom, he can lie to you concerning cases. What you have to learn to do is this devil is a liar. And because I sit under truth, it helped break those lies. Mm -hmm. Satan's, Satan's job is to take us out of the game. It's to get us not to try, to get us, you to give up not becoming a lawyer, get us to say, but I'm not good enough to be a beauty queen. Y'all broke those lies. So you got to look at the victories in your life to cause you to continue to move towards. Does that make sense? Clap your hand if you understand that. Somebody clap your hand and give God the praise. The reason why... And let me say this too. The reason why some people can't come into truth is because they don't sit under truth. Right. So they sit under the continual lies. So when they're in that dark place, they have no one to speak no one. truth over them. So they stay in the lie. That's why church is so important. Honey, you want to say something? I was like, you always, always, from the time I can remember, became a Christian, you. you always say do the opposite of how you feel. And that's always stuck with me. Because how you feel is what the devil always tells you. When you're feeling down, you're feeling unworthy, you're feeling discouraged, it's everything negative I know has nothing to do with God, right? And we know it's not having to do with God. So you always say, when he comes at it, do the opposite of how you feel. And you remind me of that because I said from the beginning, this girl's walking around with her crown like Tuesday, Friday service, walking around here with casual clothes with a crown on. So it gives you an example of not just what you believe, but you walk it out. Right. You know, if you don't feel, you know, that you're an attorney, whatever, you get your book, you get your briefcase, you get your luggage, and you look the part. It's like, but you teach us that. Right. You know, you walk in the opposite of how you feel. Right. If you feel right today, you don't want to take a shower, you feel depressed, you go take a shower. You go get your nails done. I remember someone you know, had, had a passing, you know, someone passed the, that died in their family. The first thing you told them, go take a shower, go get dressed. You and your loved one, go get your nails done. Do the opposite. Don't live in it. Don't live in the And that's the what darkness. a lot of people do. A lot of people live in their depression. Right, because they, they don't have it. the word, though. They, they don't, don't sit under the word. They don't word. sit under the word. Like they don't sit but the word will tell you, that's crazy. What are yeah. you doing? Someone just died. Why, yeah. are, why are you telling them to go, you know, get their nails done and go feel good about themselves? Because I know for me, in my cultures, when someone dies, you are to wear black. You are to wear a specific color. You are to mourn a certain day. But I know in Christendom, when I'm seeing the Christians, it's like so opposite. I'm like, Christendom is such life when I see life. But because in other, God is life. But in other culture, we don't have that. We don't have life. Honey, not just culture, but that's the, that's, that's the way the a lot of people, the yes, world. the world. That's yeah. the world. That's, the world. That's, that's NBA players. That's soccer yes, players. That's yes, football players. Yes. That's tennis players. Absolutely. The, the, Naomi Osaka, one of yes. the things she dealt with was anxiety. Yes. So people live in that dark place live because they don't have people mm -hmm. who can speak life. They right. don't come to, they go to practice, but they don't come to right. church. Right, right. They, they listen go to, to the trainer. To work, but they, yeah. they, don't, they listen to the trainers they, on their yeah. natural job. But people don't understand that they need a spiritual trainer yes. because your spirit is before natural. Yeah, exactly. So they have the natural part that most people put the emphasis on, the but not the spiritual yet. part. Right. And so they die. They get into that place. They are millionaires, but they're unhappy. That's right. They're the top of their sports, but they're suicidal mm -hmm. right. because they're, they're missing that spiritual connection. And it's not that we don't feel the same things or go through the same things, but we know where to go to yes. to get life. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think that's so I'm going to clap your hand and give God a praise if I'm making sense to anybody in here. I think that's the main key. If we can take anything away, whoever you know, that you're watching at home, the main thing you can take away is that we are 
all the same. It doesn't matter what, what language we speak, what color we are, mm -hmm. what country you mm -hmm. come from. Mm -hmm. In Vietnam and Asia and Africa, Very we good. all struggle with depression. Very we all good. struggle with, Very good. with insecurity. We Very all struggle good. with self you know, worthiness. We still struggle with who in the world we are. Are we a man? Are we a woman? Uh, who? What do I like? What do I not like? It's, we good. all struggle the same struggles. And as Christians, as a former Buddhist, and now a Christian, we still struggle the same. But the difference I love that you said, Jada, is that you have a community. You know where to turn to. You know how to come out of that. Because she has been, even through this, this process, in some deep stuff. You know, in the past couple years, we've had to continuously pull her out of it, speak life, sh shrug it off, go wash your face. We had to keep getting her through that journey. So you have that village, you have that. So, but one thing, if I can, if I just wanna add this part to it, cause you know you had Quinn share this part too. But, you know, she always says she's a church baby, and I know we, we all know her, but a lot of people at home are, are just visiting here. They're like, what's a church baby? And then parents who are now wanting to bring their kids to church, should I grow my kids in church? Why do I need to bring my kids to church? What's the importance of um, having them go to Sunday school? A local church. Or a local church. I can just watch service from home. And that's how we, this is where we are right now. A lot of people are just watching from home. There's no more interaction. There's no more fellowship. And, and, but she is truly a church baby, but what is a church baby? But I, I just, I'm just listening to everything you're sharing. You are a testament you know, of the victory of a church baby, not because of perfection, but because of the struggles she's gone through. And because of a church baby, people like to label, you know, or even pastor's kid, we go through our issues, but we come out of it together. And that's the difference that the world is missing. And, and those of even us, those of you sitting in here still struggling, why do I need to come to church for? And moms in here, I want to encourage you so and dads, much. And mom. dads, single, married, together, not together. Why is it so important to keep pushing and having, you see Quinn here, why is it so important to keep bringing them here, having them under the covering, have them under the word. Sometimes I have moms that comes to me and I, I sometimes I said, I don't know what to say to, the, you know, we just don't know what to say to our kids sometimes because that's just how far off they are. But I just encourage them, just keep bringing them. That's the one thing I tell them. I said, just keep bringing them. I said, because the one thing I, that I know and I tell them is that you and I may not know what to say to them, but it's God's presence, them being here, God's, only God himself will, will deal with them and can break them and can touch their heart. And that's the best thing that as a parent, that for you to sit at home and while you're here, just to be encouraged and that you're not doing nothing wrong. You're doing a great thing Amen. by bringing your kids and your teens, especially your teens. And key, it was key to how, how Quinn said, be an example, example. of yes. prayer. Being so example. they got to see that example. And then what I was speaking about, when Jada said she went to those, those young ladies she was speaking to, she said she told them about the seed. And speaking the word and how the enemy yeah. got to speak back. That's because that. what she learned. She here. learned that. And, and because she learned it, that. those seeds went inside of her, yes. she was able to make that deposit yes. to other people. And we take that very lightly. We take that for lightly. But you, Jada, being here is, is there's there is proof. There's proof in the book. There's this proof right here that the word works. Growing your God, growing your children in the things of God works. And I pray by the grace of God that God keep. <laughs> you know, we have children that we, our children sees you. And I, you know, as role models. So this position, basketball, soccer, whatever it is, it's a opportunity for it's God to use. That's a platform that God has given you as an opportunity to share his word and be an example. Because I can tell to my daughter or my son, you know, you can do things and live right in God and still God can bless you. You can be the top soccer player. You can be the best Miss, you know, USA, Miss Universe and still walk with integrity, still hold yourself, still be a, a, a woman of virtue, Amen. you know? So that's amazing opportunities that all of you all in here, all of us have that we, that God, this one, when gives, God gives us an opportunity. That's what your platform is for. Because a lot of them, what is my platform for? Amen. Why do I want to rap? Why do I want to model? There is a reason for it. Amen. Jada, do you feel like killing yourself now? Absolutely not. <laughs> the re I said that for a reason. Do you want to die now? Absolutely not. Why? I have too much to do. I have too yes. much life to live. Yes. I have too much That's it. That's life it. in That's the it. world Say to bring again. back. I have somebody to needs to hear that. Why don't you want to die like you wanted to die at 14 or 13? Why being at 21? What's the difference between then when you wanted to die and now? Yeah. What you're saying, there's nothing wrong with what you said. I'm just mm -hmm. making clearer. Go. 
where you are right now is not where you're always going to be. And just to make it more realistic, even just from a non-spiritual perspective, you're still growing. Life is still happening. Yes. You can't check out too soon because it's not your time. So you don't even have the authority to do that. That's right. The, long, the more you live, the more you um, open yourself up to God and what he has for you. And instead of just letting so all the bad things just marinate in, in your name. mind and in your heart, you, you can't let that stuff sit. That was my problem. I let stuff sit. And when you're depressed, you like to sit in a dark place. Isn't that weird how you just want to cut all the lights off yeah. and you just want to be by yourself? Yeah, sure. He, the devil, he will set you by yourself to kill you because that's when no one is speaking to you. By then, you've already shut down. At a point in time, anything someone was saying was going in one ear, out the other. Like, okay, yeah, whatever. Are you done now? And you can't, you can't get to that place where your heart is so hardened because... At the end of the day, you'll have nobody to blame but yourself. Ah, so then good. I had nobody to blame but myself. Right now, I have nobody to blame but myself right. because of free will. I chose to fight. I chose to listen to life. I chose to very good. Very follow good. Very example. Good. Very good. And I chose to listen to what God said about me. And not to say that, oh, I've arrived, I've made it. No, I still have my days. And even through this process and working up to the pageant, sometimes I'll be like, Lord, if I just run my car off the side of the road right now. And that's just me being so serious right now because the pressures of life is just real. It's hard to deal with. Sometimes you just don't want to wake up. Even in jobs now, they're, they're giving mental health days yeah. where you can call and you say, you know, I just need, I need to stay home. So on the job, they're now giving mental yes, health Yes, wow. absolutely. It's a plus holiday. My job, we have that now. <laughs> wow. That's how that. real it is. But the other thing I wanted you to hear too is, is because now you see it's like, God has now opened up a whole new world to you. Absolutely. So that makes you think, what else he could open up? Exactly. <laughs> so that's what makes you want to live. Yes, you because he, that's it. He's right. giving you a glimpse like, oh, this is getting good. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is getting good. Gotta keep living. So the last thing you're thinking about is dying. Absolutely. Because you want to live. Because Absolutely. he's giving you glimpses of what your future look like yeah. inside of him. And the more you stay inside of him, he said he'll take you from glory to glory to glory. So it only gets more exciting in God. And Satan knows that. That's why he tries to take us out of God. Right. Because he knows that if we get out of God, it leads to death. There's a way that seems right to a man. Mm -hmm. But the end thereof is death. And I want to say to everybody, no matter what you're struggling with, young men or young women in here, no matter what you're struggling or dealing with, stay in God. Because yeah. God will never lead you wrong. Look at somebody say, never. Never. And it's not cliche and it's not church. You need to know that when you're by yourself... When you're battling whatever you're battling with, understand that Satan always comes before your breakthrough. Yes. That, and proof of that, yes. that that's not just words. The car accident came before she won the crown. <laughs> the eyesight came before she won the crown. So anytime you go through your greatest test, it means a great blessing is about to be manifested. Yeah. Hear that. That's the truth. A broken ankle, what is he trying to fight? A broken leg, knee, what is he trying to fight? So an evidence that something great is supposed to be coming out of your life, that evidence of that is what is the test that's happening right now. I'll say it again. The evidence of something great is about to happen in your life is the evidence of what is happening right now. So the harder it gets, that means the greater something's yes, about to yes, break through. Yes, yes. The reason it's coming so hard is because he's trying to get you to forfeit. Who's he? Only past Mother Diana. Who is he? The devil. The devil is trying to get you to forfeit what God has for you. Mm -hmm. He was trying to get Jada to forfeit the crown. So you got to ask yourself, this is not just an interview. You got to ask yourself, what is the devil trying to get me to forfeit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in my own life? What is he trying to get me to move away or not come to church or change churches? Or I got to go to another church. Every church you go to, you can run into an issue. Only three people, they'll try it again. <laughs> and I said, church, even relationships, mm -hmm. even marriage. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to divorce this person. How are you going to divorce this person? Who are you going to find? You going to find Mr. Right? How are you going to find Mr. Right when you're Mrs. Wrong? Ooh, no. Help me, Lord. Mm -hmm. You'll get that one later. That's the truth. Most time, the thing you run from is the thing you got to deal with. I know five of y'all, and you could never run from you. Look at somebody say, you could never run from you. Y'all, come on. Look at somebody else say, you could come shout out. Say, you could never run from you. 
So understand, today you're looking at Jada as an example. You look at Stacy, they are examples of people that fought and people who stayed in the fight. The key to Christianity is to do what? Five of y'all. The key to Christianity is to do what? The key to Christianity is to do what? Because if you stay in the fight, God will fight for you. And the reason why God wants you to come forth is because the more you come forth, the more you're an example of his love. So other people need you. Does that make sense? Somebody say, somebody needs me. I don't know why y'all still behind me. Say, somebody needs me. Let's stand on our feet. So you want to hear this. And then because you need it, the devil will do all he could to take you out. If you understand what I'm saying today, take a step forward. Men and women in this church. Let me say this too. In the spirit, there's no gender. How many of you know men battle with insecurities? How many of you know men battle with, with mental issues? In fact, men probably battle with more mental issues with women than you think because men don't talk. Men have the highest suicide rate. Because men don't talk. How many of you know women talk? <laughs> I wish I had somebody real in here. I wish I had one real woman in here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Women, talk. women talk. It's men that keep it in. Amen? Amen? Men keep it in. We deal with it in different ways. But women, they talk. They can find a girlfriend or somebody to talk to. They can find a hotline somewhere. If you hear me, take a step forward. They can find a mama to talk to. They can find somebody to talk to. Raise your hands to heaven. Today is an example of never to give up. What's the day an example of? Never to give up. If you wonder, why did I come to church today? You came to hear the service. Don't give up. Because God has a crown for you, not just in heaven. He has a crown in life for you. Oh, my God. He has a crown in life for you. This crown was not supposed to be on her head. This crown was not supposed to be on her head. But today she's wearing a crown as an overcomer to show that God can. It's real, God can. Oh, five of y'all clapping, but somebody really getting it. If I got one person to get it, stand in the middle. So she represents us. She don't just represent Jada, she represent us. When all of us were in a dark place. Male or female, she represents us. And she represents that if God could do it for her, God could do it for us. Don't miss out on the blessings that God have for you because you allow pride to get in the way. You allow lies to get in the way. That sermon's coming, y'all. So everybody can wonder what my next sermon can be. It can be dealing with the father of lies. Satan is a liar. Say it again. Satan is a liar. Sa oh, three, y'all. Oh, Satan is a liar. He lies. And he, and he will not stop lying. That's his job. That's his, Bible says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. If you want to put something else in there, he said, and he lies. He will lie to you. Tell you nobody believes in you. You're not good enough. But even when you feel like that, you're good enough because Christ said you. You got to know how to run to the source. You have to. If you don't know how to run to the source, you're not going to be able to make it. If you know how to run to people, you're in trouble because people are going to fail you. If you hear me today, take a step. Job can fail you. Money can fail you. Nothing in this room is certain except God. People can die. Okay? For y'all. Oh, I always go to my mama. I always go to my mama. What happened when mama died? Who you can go to? I always go to daddy. I always go to daddy. What God you can do when daddy died? So you have to learn to go to someone higher than you. Higher than this natural realm. Because when it, when it, when the rubber, what you can, I make my money, I'm straight. What you can do when you lose all your money? got my house, I got my car. What you going to do when you lose all of that? You have to go. If you hear me today, take a step. I got my education. What you do when you your job that you went to school for is closed down. You can't get that, that position anymore. You got to know how to go to God. Whoever said amen heard, heard me. Let's raise our hands to heaven, somebody in this room. Father, today, we repent. Can we start there? Uh, only three people but let's go let's ride we repent for where we've doubted you where we've not believed and, but we thank you today for being a God of hope God has given us hope in this room you are 
If we learn to stop looking at people and being jealous of them and learn to say, man, if they could do it, I could do it too, it'll change our whole mindset. We, we learn to say, if they could drive, I could drive too. If they got a house, I could get my house too. I ain't got to be envious of nobody. There's more than one house in the land. I don't see no neighborhood with one house. <laughs> I don't see one apartment, no apartment building with one apartment. Why is it called an apartment building? That means there's more than one apartment. That's speaking to someone. You ain't got to be jealous of no one. You ain't got to walk envious of no one. In fact, people should be jealous of the God that you serve. You should provoke people to jealousy. You'll get that one lady. Should, because of you, people should want to know Jesus. Because of you. Eyes closed, hands raised. Father, today, we thank you for how you've honored Stacy and Jada, God. We thank you for how you've honored them. Eyes still closed. It's okay to clap. Keep your eye closed. Leave here today knowing that God did it. It wasn't the right man. It wasn't the right woman. It wasn't the right judge. God did it for them. And the good thing about it is that God is no respecter of persons. That if he did it for them, he could do it for you. My eight-year-old baby came home last night and said, Daddy, I won't go on a pageant. Eight years old. Eight years old. She understood if God could do it for Jada, if God could do it for me, I ain't got to be jealous. God could do it for her. Yeah, God, Daddy, when could I go in one? That's how our mentality needs to... We got, somebody say, go flip mode. Oh, Only my right side, eyes closed. Say, go flip mode. Go flip mode. The world put it like this. The world says, flip the script. You, learn, you need to learn to flip the script on the devil. Why doesn't he want you to try? Why doesn't he want you to go to church? Why doesn't he want you to like Bishop? <laughs> Why doesn't he want you to trust him? Why doesn't he want you to tell him nothing? Why doesn't he want you to get close to him? Why doesn't he want you to sing? Go flip the script. Ask yourself, what is he trying to rob? What is he trying to stop? Somebody say, flip the script. Flip the script. Oh, five of you. Why doesn't he want you to go to that church? Well, I'll be the only black person there. I'll be the only white person there. So, what does he know that you will be the trailblazer for that he's trying to rob you from being a part of? The devil comes to kill. He's a thief. What is he? Thief. Only Mother Diana. He's a thief. He's a thief. He wanted to steal Jada's crown. He wanted to steal Stacy's law degree. He's a thief. What is he? He tries to steal love. He tries to steal friendships. He tries to steal relationships. He's a thief. He's not just a liar. He's a what? Thief. Only Mother Diana. If you hear me today, take a step. He's not just a liar. What is he? Thief. He's trying to raw. And let me tell you something. He don't stop trying to steal. He's a thief. What is he? Thief. He will try to steal your children. He'll try to steal. He's a thief. Come to kill, steal, and destroy. And, he, and guess what, y'all? He never stops trying to steal. The only, whoever I'm talking to, whoever will hear this, the only time the devil will stop trying to steal is when you go to heaven, when, the, when Jesus returns. Other than that, as long as we're on this planet, he will continually try to steal. But how many of you know our stuff is covered under the blood of Jesus? Our children are covered. Our home is covered. You ain't got the blood, the blood, the blood. Somebody say the blood of Jesus. Uh, somebody say the blood of Jesus. Some people don't understand the power of the blood. That's why they're prisoners in their home. You'll get that later. Some people don't understand the power of the blood. That's why they never leave their home because of COVID. Do you know many people that don't are afraid to leave their houses right now because COVID is still out and are bound to their house? Not because the government made release means that everyone leaves their home. There are a lot of people who are still prisoners in their home scared to leave because they don't want to get COVID because they are bound with fear. They don't understand there's something that trumps fear and that's faith and love. Oh, whoever hears me, this will change your life. I believe today that there are people in this room, at least seven, I don't guess, young men and young women. I'm giving you the greatest life insurance policy that you will ever sign up for, and that's knowing Jesus. Eyes, eyes closed. I said this to somebody this morning. I think 
I don't know who I was talking to in the back. I tell them I was, it was Rosie, eyes closed. Rosie has a sister. I, was I said, did your sister come to church today? She said, no. And Rosie's sister has children, eyes closed. I said, Rosie, you got to let your sister bring those children to church. I said, because the greatest thing she could ever give those kids is not Fila, not Gucci, not Louis Vuitton. The greatest thing she could ever give her four children is the word of God. I asked Rosie if I told her that. And I said, Rosie, I said, there's no greater gift that I could give Chai and Adonaya and Amori other than the word of God. I meant that. That was not just me trying to impress. Y'all wasn't even there. So I wasn't trying to I, That was me and Rosie talking. I said, there's no greater gift I could give my children than the things of God. I said, because when they reach 18 or 19, they're not going to remember Gucci. They can remember God's word. When life hits them, they can remember how to pray. I meant that. I want to say to somebody in this room today, the greatest policy to deal with this life is God. And whoever think I'm joking, didn't Turkey just had an earthquake and 22,000 people would die just like that? Babies? So how will we promise anything in this life? What was the promise you that would walk out here and that you won't die? I mean, just think about it. What promise? You so good you could dodge death? Our security, our safety, our trust, our hope, and everything is in God. Let me tell you when we should worry. We should worry when God takes his hand off of our lives. That's when we should panic. But as long as God is in control, we are right. And Jesus is Lord and he got the victory. Somebody clap your hand right there. He clap your hand, eyes closed. I said seven. Young man, I'm talking to you. Today, God is calling you. Don't leave here. If you want to receive Jesus, those who know how to pray, Odise Plummer, those who know how to pray, women of God that know how to pray, wife, I want you to move out of your seat and say, I want to know, I want to try this Jesus. And let me tell you something, you can't try him and he'd not be good. There's, that I could guarantee you. I could try Chick-fil-A. I could try Popeyes. And I'd be like, man, this ain't what they say. But Jesus, you can't try him and he'd not be good. I'm that sure of him. I'm sure of him. I'm sure of him. Ten persons, I believe, that are in this room. Those of you who know how to pray, keep your hands lifted. I'm going to count to ten. After I count to ten, I stop ten. If you want to receive Jesus as Lord today and say, I want what God have for me. I'm going through some dark things in my life. Nine. You can't say that God wasn't knocking. Eight. He came for you today. Seven. I don't guess in the Holy Ghost. If I said there's a seven to ten people in here, they're in the room. Six. You need to make a decision. God will bring you out of the depressed state. He will bring you out of a lonely state, but you got to make him Lord. Lord means he got to be in the driver's seat of your life. It means, God, I can't do this as a mother. I can't do this as a father. I can't do this as a wife. I can't do this alone. I need you to take over. Five. Come up here today and somebody will grab your hand. I need 10 of my leaders to come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. Miss Victoria, you could be one of them to turn around and, and Mother Diana come and, and just wait. Four. Quickly, 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 come. And grab their hand say, pray with me, I want to know this Jesus. I said young men, they're young men that need to come today to make him Lord of their lives. Come Stacy, grab somebody's hand. Come quickly, Odis. You come, come quickly. Make a way, make way. Hurry like you're trying to save somebody's life. Four. Today, somebody may want to rededicate. Bishop, I haven't been to the place where I need to be. I want to rededicate. I want to make him Lord. That's one, two, three, four, five. There are more people that need to come. I want to rededicate my life to him. Quickly, quickly, quickly. These leaders are strolling. Come quickly, quickly, quickly. Three. Young man, I'm talking to you. Somebody invited you here today, first time in the building. I'm talking to you and, and today, if you make Jesus Lord, your dreams will come true, but you got to make him Lord. He will test you and prove you so it won't be about you, but he will stay with you. Three. 
today raise your hands to him raise your hand I want to accept Jesus into my life yes sir yes sir yes sir they're coming 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 if you're in this room and you're a leader come grab their hands as they come meet them meet them I want to make Jesus Lord I've been thinking about it I've been battling with it but I'm wasting time I don't want to waste no more time I'm 18 I'm 21 I'm 25 I'm 23 I'm in my 20s and today I want to make a decision to make Jesus Lord too when I reach one I stop and we're gonna pray he came to turn your life around if anybody ever told you that God is not good is a lie God has never failed me never I fail him but he has never I wish I could make you believe that God has never God has been good to me every day of my life I might have not been good to him but he's been God there's nothing better than God one young lady your life is found in him young man I I wish I could make you believe it people that commit suicide I wish I could make them hold that gun back hold the drugs back hold the pills back I wish I could tell them wait one more day somebody in your seats that believe God points your hands at the persons that are up here I want you all to lead them in prayer lead them in prayer lead them in prayer let them open their mouth and invite Jesus in make him Lord say Jesus I I believe in your death I believe in your burial I believe you died for my sins I believe you hang on the cross for me and you shed your blood for me and I want you to come into my heart and be Lord of my life today and for those of you that are rededicating, he said, I'm married to the backslider. God, don't divorce you because you're backslid. He said, he's married to you. Somebody else in their seat is battling. I don't know what you're battling with. But if I told you I had $10 billion for you, run up here. Jesus is greater than any money. What you're battling with? Somebody, I feel you. You're battling with. God is greater. Ah, somebody come quickly, some quickly. I wish I had a lady to come up here. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Say this prayer with me, somebody in the room. Those who came to the altar. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner. I confess I've sinned against you he's listening say I believe in your death uh-huh I believe that's it in your burial I believe you rose on the third day Jesus come into my heart come into my heart be Lord of my life for the rest of my life Lord Jesus I give you ownership tell him again say Lord Jesus I give you ownership I receive you now as my Lord as my Savior as my friend I thank you Jesus say this I receive your forgiveness now say I receive your forgiveness say now say in Jesus name I still close hear me I want you to hear this the Bible says if any man be in Christ just hear this he said the Bible says he's a new creation it says that all things are passed away old sins old habits old are passed away and it says behold all things he said all things like everything in your life has become new what does that mean preacher that means God looks at you new he don't, uh, he don't look at you sinful. He don't look at you as a messed up. He looks at you brand spanking new. He say, you're my creation. He said, where others refuse you, I embrace you. Mm. He said, where others cast you away, I welcome you in. Where others disown you, he say, you're mine. Mm. Oh, that's five of you. I'll say that again. He said, where others disown you, he said, I will call you mine. 
Mm, somebody got that. Somebody say, I belong to him. Mm, you may not like me, but same. somebody say, I belong to him. You may never invite me over to your house, but there's somebody who got a greater house. You may never take me to my destination, but there's someone who will take me further than my destination. Hand raised in the room, in the room. Yeah, yeah, somebody's sensing him right now. That's God. And for men who don't cry, let me say this. Jesus cried. You know, some men said, I never cried. That's a problem. That's a problem, men, when you can't cry because Jesus cried. You got to hear that. There's a problem when a man say he can't cry. That tells me you're more man than Jesus. Uh, Jesus wept, it said. Didn't say he just cried, said he wept. When you're a man that can't cry, you may be so detached. You gotta find that place where you're broken. Because it's, that's for some man in here, because he said a broken and a contrite heart, he will not despise for that man that can't cry. And if you can't cry to God, how you could love a woman? If you can't be sensitive to God, how could you be sensitive to a woman? You will use her and leave her. Not because you're a bad person, you know. Because you didn't know how to be sensitive to God. Father, today we thank you for grace. Somebody say they say Jesus is real. Jesus is real. Uh, yeah, yeah. Somebody say Jesus is real. Jesus. Look at somebody real quick. Tell them say Jesus is real. Jesus. Mother Diana got it. I didn't say touch him. Mother Diana, she gotta grab him, touch him. Look him in the eye. Find somebody, tell them, say, Jesus is real. Look up real. Uh, you may be seated. Right? Go to somebody, tell them real quick, say, Jesus is real. Shady, you can say, yeah, ushers, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. I says, that's it, it's it, that's it, embrace her, that's it. That's it, Denise, that's it. That's it, Miss Victoria, that's it. That's it, that's it, Quinn. Let us sit with you, that's it, baby. It's okay to cry. I cry all the time. You come in here and hear me cry, you think, like, Lord, what's wrong with the man? My wife gone. See you later on the LC when you come back. Flash garden gone. Faster than the speeding bullet. Everybody get ready with an offering, your best offering. Get ready with an envelope. Ushers, let's, let's go around quickly. Quickly, 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 quickly. Let's go around quickly to all my visitors. Thank you for coming today. If I didn't give you no flowers, that don't mean I don't love you. It was in my heart to give you, but we only have so much flowers. And you can't go to the rose store and tell them Jesus paid it all. All those flowers were paid for. Everybody get an envelope. If you would like to give today but have nothing to give, Jerome, help them. Somebody help them. If you're part of the membership of this church, help them out with the offering. Ken will help them. Help them with the envelopes. You're married now. You're looking so GQ. Get some envelopes. Pass them out. Get some envelopes. Y'all get Kenville involved with some ushering. Get him, get some envelope in his hand. His wife ministering, he can't let his wife beat him. Get some envelopes, just keep smiling. If you'd like to give today but have nothing to give, come to the front. I want to give but I have nothing to give. If I had it, I would give. I want to give but I have nothing to give. Somebody give them envelopes that came right on your envelopes today. Ephesians 6, write this, Ephesians 6, 13 through 16. Somebody who don't know what it is, you may want to go read it. Ephesians 6, 13 through 16. Write that on your envelope. Ephesians chapter 6, 13 through 16. Ephesians chapter 6. Write that on your envelope. I think somewhere in there, somebody look at it real quick. I think it said, after I've done all to stand, let me still stand. I, somebody make sure that's it, that I ain't quoting scriptures wrong. Right, I, I, thank you, Monica. I knew all of that. I really knew it was the arm of God. I said, make sure that I'm quoting that part. Six through, 13 through 16 should read, after I've done all to stand, let us still stand. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Monica told me that's the arm of God. I, I don't know what service she in. I said, make sure I'm quoting that part right. <laughs> I see you, Andy. Ah, 
sow your best seed to the Lord. So love you how the day how you came and helped me and didn't we ah, I like that. I like that. I like that. Y'all, things are happening so quick. I don't know what gonna happen next week. I do plan to preach next week. <laughs> I do plan should the Lord tarry. But if we have another Miss America, the service may switch. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We got another bank president. If Shonda come in here and say, I got the bank, the service may switch. She may end up on the stage. You know, if Phil tell me now the two million views, the service may switch. We may have Phil on the stage next. I don't know what will happen in this church at any time. I just go try to be led. The service may switch. Can God, y'all? Yes, it can. So your best seed to the Lord. What kind of seed? Your best seed. Can you give what you don't have? Does God honor what you give? Does God honor your offering? Somebody tell somebody, yes, he does. Wherever your treasures are, there will your heart be. You won't know if somebody love you, watch how they spend on you. You'll get that one later. If you want to know if somebody love you, watch what they do, not what they say. If you oh no if you wanna know what somebody love you, watch what they do. Watch what they what? Watch what they do, not what they say. What they what? If they got a car and you walk in, that's a problem. If they say they love you. And you dating them, how they can, you could be walking and they driving and they don't give you a ride. Don't watch what they say, watch what they, how could they be eating and you hungry? <laughs> it's 100% the truth. Watch what they, not what they say. Children, you can't say you love your parents and don't obey them. Say amen. Say amen. Well, Bishop, what if my parents tell me to jump off the building? So you, see, you know that ain't the obedience I'm talking about. That ain't what adding the kind of obedience. It did say parents don't provoke your children to wrath too. So parents play a part too, amen? You'll get that later. Not just kids are responsible, parents are responsible. Get that one later. My child's so hateful, it may be because they have a hateful parent. My child always getting so mad at baby because the parent is getting mad. My child breaking up everything in the house because they might have saw you break up everything in the house. If you have an envelope, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it. I think the service was dynamite today. Dynamite, 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 dynamite. I hear explosions. And besides the service, that food smells so good. I could smell the oxtail. That oxtail flavor is just floating through past my nose. It's like I'm waiting for you after service. So let's stand on our feet, y'all. Let's stand on our feet. Y'all, we have visitors today. Greet the visitors. There's a whole family I think I'm seeing for the first time. Greet them, man. Y'all in here who know Jump and know me, greet them. Stacy, they're all on my right. They came today. A whole family, y'all see them. They're right behind y'all. Greet them and make them feel at home. The gentleman in the white that look like, hey, hey, they, they came in here today dressed in white. They look so pleasant, y'all. Greet them. Greet them. If anybody don't greet my visitors well, they are visitors themselves. They are pretending to be a jump bite. But if someone came to you and make you feel at home, that's a jump bite. Like, she's a jump bite. She's a jump bite. She's Mrs. Jump bite. Amen. And this is a jump bite. This is a jump bite. So see Pastor Coco, see that gentleman in the white? I, I, don't, I, I think that might be his wife on the side of him or, or his sister. Amen. But y'all greet them. Greet them. Make them feel at home. People are not coming. They, there's a lot of churches to go to in Orlando. They don't have to come here. So people who come, they want to come. Amen. There's a lady right in front of Plumber. Plumber, I see her right in front of you. Greet her. Ask if you could carry a bag. Ask to help her. How many of you know love goes a long way? 
Love goes a long way. Greet people. Make them feel at home. Point your hands up here. We cover Stephanie Glover under the blood of Jesus. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. We thank you that the spirit of poverty and lack is broken. How many of you believe the spirit of poverty is broken from over your life? Take a step. OD said to me this morning, he said, Bishop, he said, when I pray for jump, I pray that God brings a billion dollars in jump. I'm not, I, he did. I say a billion. I say, do you believe God could give us a billion dollars? He said, yes. He didn't even hesitate. He said, yes. He said, that's what I pray for. And I said, grab my hand. Let's touch and agree. I said, can God give us a billion dollars in my lifetime? He said, yes. The Bible said, whatever two of you touch on earth, believe in or asking for anything. The problem with some of us is you're too afraid to ask. Tell somebody, ooh, say ask. ask. Oh, say ask. ask. You have not why. Not. You have not why. Not. My mother always says, closed mouth never get fed. <laughs> How many of you know you got to open your mouth? If you're hungry, what you got to say? Only my front row. Open your mouth and say, oh. Quinn, I heard you. Are you hungry? You're about to eat in a minute. I heard you. See, you see how I said, I heard you, Quinn. So you know what I said? Hurry up so Quinn could eat. I heard you. Punch your hands at the seed. JB, you look so GQ. I see you look so GQ. You see your G, no point, no point on me. You got nothing to do. You look so GQ. Come on the stage. Come on this great puns and this great tie. And y'all know he trying to model. He coming to be a lie so I could see him. Punch your hands over here. She'll be got game. Y'all pray for him. We cover evangelist Lashanda to God. Honor every person. Somebody say honor every gift. Say honor every gift. I want three persons in here that have no gas in their car. You came today, but you have no gas. You came and didn't know how you can get back, like no gas. And please, I'm going to check your gas needle. So if you run up here like, yeah, that's me. I will check your gas needle. But three people in here that have no gas, come quickly. You came, you, I came to church, but I have no gas. I don't know how I'm going to get back. No gas, no gas, no gas. That means all the cars. My brother, stand in the middle. I stand in the middle. Joey, I can give you gas. Go home. Full time. Fine. Full time. Full time. Full time. Clap your hands in. He ain't scared. My brother ain't scared. That's one. Two more. No gas. Full time, Joey. Full time. And you got a big old truck. No gas. That means everybody got gas, honey. Oh, we got. Come on, clap your hands for a church full of gas. Ch gasoline. Church full of gasoline. We got to say the right gas. Church full of gasoline. <laughs> you gotta be specific. Hallelujah. Spray, Mother Diana. If you're visiting today. <laughs> give, me, give me this. Give me this. Give me this. <laughs> Who missed a whole basket with the. <laughs> if you're visiting today, this is real perfume. It's called. Vanilla coconut. It's called v real perfume. What we do in this church is, you're not going to find this very many places. I've never seen it in any other place. We take real perfume and we spray it. This ain't no voodoo, hoodoo, or ludu. No. This is symbolic. What is this? Symbolic. We're spraying it symbolically. How? Symbolic. And what we're saying is, God, let it be a sweet savor to you. Because how many of you know if God receive your offering, you're blessed? Oh, if you believe that, take a, take a step. How many of you want God to receive your offering? You want God to receive your $50. You want God to receive your $5. You want God to receive your dollar. How many of you want God to receive your one? Ethan. God, we cover Ethan under the blood of Jesus. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. Saying, that God, open doors for him. Let him learn. Let him grow. Let him stay planted. No grudges, no undercurrents. Let him learn and let him grow. Let Ethan go to school and get a bachelor degree. Then a master's degree. And then a doctorate degree. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. So God honors offering you. 
That's why you always want to give God something to work with. He honors offering. What he honors? So, Father, we thank you that this seed is blessed. Every heart in this room is blessed. Multiply it a thousandfold. Somebody say a billionfold. Say a billionfold. Can God multiply a billionfold, y'all? In this life? If you believe that, take a step forward. Multiply a billionfold. Raise your hands high. Some of y'all took a step then. Y'all wasn't stepping before, but I say billion fold. I hear all kind of shoes stepping. <laughs> Father, you're a good God. You're better than any bank. You're better than any Bitcoin. Yeah, somebody in here dealing with Bitcoin. And you're better than any stock. And I'm not telling you not to invest in Bitcoin. And I'm not telling you not to invest in stock. But I tell you there's somebody who's bigger than Bitcoin. His name is called Jesus. I decree and declare no one in this room will die before their time. I got that kind of power. I believe it. For anybody to believe that, I don't believe it. I told the doctor I will never get COVID and I never had it. The doctor told me everybody will get it. I say, I will not get COVID. He said, everybody can get it. I said, I will not get COVID. And we started to argue in his office. Well, if I go back to that doctor today, I will tell him I ain't get no COVID. And guess what? That is still my declaration. I will not get COVID. Oh, y'all ain't got to clap. I will never get it. If you believe God's word is true, take a step forward. I believe what God said. Children had it. Wife had it. Sleep next to her. I ain't got it. She should have tried my confession. She said, I never get COVID. <laughs> so, Father, we honor you. Bless the food today. I went to say bless the oxtail, but we have more than oxtail. <laughs> Maybe because I'm just thinking with the oxtail. So I was trying not to be selfish. Amen. Bless all the food to take God. Let it do, let it do our bodies good. Thank you for the hands that prepare it. And Lord, thank you for the ability to be able to give people a small reward. To show them we appreciate them. We honor you. Thank you for honoring Jada. And honoring the queens in this house. Thank come Sky. Thank you for blessing Sky. Sky has to go in surgery, y'all. Bring me some oil. And she, she has cysts on her ovaries, they're saying, and they have to go and cut it. How many of you believe that God is a healer? Yes. Uh, and it's three, y'all. God being a healer doesn't mean that she don't want to get surgery. But how many of you know we know the surgeon is, the ultimate surgeon is God? Because some surgeon could cut you and you never come out of surgery. You'll get that later. Some surgeon, point your hands at her. This could be you, y'all. I know you're ready to go eat. But imagine you had some cysts or cancer. And you wanted people to take a few more minutes. Look, look, what you peeking for? Close your eye. It's real oil. Show her the bottle, y'all. She peeking. It's real oil. We pray. Point your hands for God will heal her. We know God could dry up the cysts. But if God choose for her to be rolled into surgery, he's still a healer. So, Father, we give you praise for everything in this body that is unlike you to dry up. Everybody, point your hands. We command healing over this body. She will not die before her time. And we thank you, O oh God, that by your stripes we are healed. Father, we raise your hands high like you receive it. Higher, higher, higher. God, we thank you that this body belongs to you. Remember every praise and worship song. Remember every dance, remember every spoken word, remember every gift, remember every prayer. Honor her today. Somebody put your hands on her around her. Father, we touch and we agree that all healing belongs to you. Miracles belong to you. Uh -huh. Deliverance belongs to you. Holy Spirit, lead us today, guide us today. God, please don't take your hand from our lives. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. And don't take your spirit from us. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. Grab somebody, let them know you love them. We got visitors in the house. Quinn, make yourself to the visitor. We got JB. There's a gentleman. Get connected with Jump Ministries Global Church. 
Be sure to follow us on your favorite social media networks and never miss out on our bi-monthly men and women's prayer services, our youth events and activities, our global outreach and community celebrations, our competitions, conferences, or even just to get that one word to encourage you. Just visit jumpministries.org. Building people. Changing